Hi guys, me Sign One Four Seven back again today with an unboxing of something that just arrived today in the post. I ordered an eBay, and I think I know what it is. I order a lot of stuff all the time. I think I know, just judging by the packaging, what this is. Um, I might. I'm going to try to open it very carefully so I can reuse the packaging for if I'm ever selling anything on eBay. But uh. I got scissors in case I get frustrated and just want to jab into it because it's I get pretty impatient when I'm unboxing things. But yeah, I think this might be my platinum edition of Mabel One, um, and hopefully I think it's got like a better condition cover than the one I currently own. I remember when I first actually got Mabel One second hand, the cover was already in bad condition, but I just made it even worse over time because the cover doesn't even. It's not even intact with the case anymore. It just falls right off and everything. It doesn't even have a booklet or anything, and. Uh, but yeah, it was just nice to have two editions of Medieval, the the retail edition, that's what it's called, like the black labelled one, and this is like the platinum labelled one, so it'll have like the shiny disc instead of the art that's on the disc. But uh, the reason I actually got both, um, well this is not actually the exact reason, but one of the good reasons I got thought for having both is because my sister has two TVs in her bedroom, and we regularly like to reset Medieval on that. I used to just play it on the emulator in, in German, and she'd just play it in English on um, PS1. And the reason I used to play in German is because German is the only ISO that's in English, well it's one of the only ISOs in English, that will play past the top mausoleum without crashing. And uh, I deliberately insist on playing a PAL version so that the race is actually valid because you run faster in American versions of games. But um, more to the point, I actually ordered this because it comes with a very rare uh, medieval map that I used to own when I was younger, as well as a poster of Kia and Dan from Medieval 2 which didn't come with this of course. But, um, yeah, and I, I was just excited because um, it doesn't sell anywhere on Amazon or anything, and I saw, like, the occasional one on eBay when I was looking it up, because I just searched, I actually searched specifically Medieval 1 game with map, and honestly, I saw only, like, two of them, so I thought, oh gosh, and it said rare on it as well, so I'm just so glad I actually managed to get a copy, and I tried opening this as carefully as possible, but look at that, I just completely tore it. There we go, I've got plenty of Jeffy bags anyway. But, uh, yeah, it is medieval, and it is the platinum edition on Jewel's Shop Compound. Oh god, it actually looks pretty good edition, actually. I love how I've actually finally got a cover of medieval that actually looks very good on a shelf. But, um, yeah, that's the... Yeah, everything about it's exactly the same, except it's just platinum. Like, that's the back cover as well. It's just... Is the camera focusing well enough? Because I can't, I can't really tell. Because, is it? Yeah, also got my face. <laughs> my face is right on the camera, but, uh... Yeah, I can't really tell how well you're seeing that, but no, it looks fine. Uh, but let's just get into it. Oh god. Yes, and it does come with the map. Awesome. And also the booklet. My old one only came with the logo. It didn't come with the booklet. And then the yeah, bubble wrap was padding it out. So yeah, I'll be sure to leave this guy a good review on eBay because it's very good condition. Look, and the cover is actually intact. My other one is a complete mess. I'm actually showing you at the end of the video in case she's never saw my, like, my medieval one, medieval one, a PS1 game video. Um, of all my PS1 games, of course, that it was actually a complete wreck, that cover. But I actually do have the two regions of Medieval 2, so we could race at that anyway. But I'm hoping to get like another Medieval 2 one with the map and sell my other one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, here's the map right here. I'm actually going to put this on my wall, actually. Oh my god. <laughs> my friend, I think, I think it's called Bronified Dragon on YouTube, but on... Oh no! This is actually the same! It's on both sides. This is the Medieval 2 poster as well as on the other side. The Medieval 1 poster. This is the one with Key and Dan. So I've got both then. Oh, awesome. I'll, I'll need to full copy this now then because I kind of wanted both on my wall. But, uh, yeah, like that's the photo with Kia and Dan. Can I just get that in camera? There we go. And I think there's some screenshots of the. Yeah, screenshots of the levels. I said, I don't know. Believe it or not, this is actually better lighting than my room. That's the whole reason I'm actually recording it in my sister's room. But like, I think that's the T Rex. I can't quite see what that one is. I think it's, yeah, it's Waffram Hall. Um, oh, that's new. They changed the look of Palethorn a little. Look, could I get that on camera? Um, yeah, I think you could just vaguely see that next to Kia's hand. That's Palethorn's original look. God, that's quite weird. But here's the map that actually came with Medieval 1. And it actually has a map of the first four levels, is it? Yeah, Dan's Crypt, the Graveyard, Semper Hill, and Hilltop Mausoleum. Right there, I, and you might have noticed I actually have it in my channel art right now. But there we go. I need to get, just get good lightning for it. Lighting, <laughs> good lightning. <laughs> that's actually a weapon in medieval. <laughs> Funnily enough, but yeah, I think that's yeah. Salt up mostly right there. 
Cemetery Hill and Dance Crypt and the Graveyard. And also it tells you where everything is on it. Like if you look closely you'll see where it says there's shields and it'll see where it says there's vials and um money and light bottles and everything like that. So yeah, it's a pretty cool map to have and fun enough I must have had this years ago when I was like five or six or something because I definitely remember the boats are being much bigger than this and I'm going out of focus. Get your shit together. Sorry. I'm a complete strong. I never usually saw myself on camera so it's a big step for me to do it on my own. I usually never do it whenever Alex is with me. But oh yeah I forgot the runes used to look rather plasticky when I saw them. Uh, when I talk I actually used to always notice that the runes look very plasticky. Will that focus? I'm on camera. See look. That's what the runes look like on the map. Gosh, I'm very fascinated by this. I'm feeling really nostalgic right now. I've not seen this map in like years. But, uh, oh yeah, and of course, the awesome picture of Sir Danny Fortescue at this side. <laughs> oh my god. I'm actually I'm actually really glad I'm actually collecting all this merchandise again. And I'm hoping to collect some demo discs too. And here's just the instruction manual that came with it as well. This instruction manual? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Just the manual, booklet, or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, it says in the back it's compatible, it's compatible with the DualShock. I'm coming to think of it, I don't think... No, I think it was. Maybe one is actually compatible with the DualShock, but I'm not sure. Maybe they added that as a feature in the Platinum version, but I really don't know. I'm pretty sure that DualShock... I'm pretty sure you could use Analog Stick when you played maybe one, just on the other copy. But, uh... Oh god, it's been ages since I've actually seen a Mighty One booklet. It wasn't in Japanese, of course. The Japanese one came with a booklet. I'm sorry how nerdy I look with glasses. I'm sorry, I just... I, can, I can't see without them. That's the only reason I wear them. But, uh... I know, I do really bad for my eyes with constantly playing video games and always on the computer. But, um... Yeah, it talks about the books here and the weapons and such. Uh, what else is in here? Oh, oh god, the gargoyles. They look more like... They look like rams! I'm getting, like, little rams or goats, something like that in the actual booklet. And, uh, oh, here's a picture of all the little pickup things you can get, like life bottles, uh, where well, you can't pick up a <laughs> gargoyle, and, um, a rune. Sorry if my hand's shaking right now, I'm really nervous. But, uh, Charles of Souls. Ooh. The Charles of Souls looks a bit different in the booklet. Like, okay, oh, sorry, I can never know what way to turn the booklet. And, um, our final hint the Daring Dash. To break open weak spots and walls. I will never need to do that for Dan's script so far. Oh, then it, no, you can. You can use the Daring Dash to break down walls, and you can also double tap the forward directional button, triangle button. If you're using an analog controller, press hard forward on the left stick, triangle button. Repeat this until you've broken down the wall to reveal. As this is a skill you'll have to pick up later on in the game. We have it from the start of Medieval 2, but it's more useful in Medieval 1 because you can use it as a weapon and hurt enemies with it, whereas Medieval 2, it merely just serves the purpose of going fast and doing big jumps. But by defeating a particular boss, there may be areas in the level you'll not be able to reach straight away. Remember where they are and come looking for them once you have this handy skill. Hmm. I don't recall ever having to return to any levels in Medieval 1, apart from Dan's Crypt. That's the only one like, I think we have to backtrack to. But, uh, I don't remember having to backtrack. You don't have to backtrack to any levels. That's, that's rubbish. But <laughs> now you are ready to follow Zarak through Galamir. Look out for the exits. I don't know, maybe that's something they rushed. Maybe they did intend to add that, but... They're still marked by the green glow of Zarek's trail, the residue of his evil magic. May the heroes of Galamir be with you always. <laughs> oh god, clearly a Star Wars reference, but um... Oh yeah! And here, here's the little credits at the end here to Chris Sorrell and Jason Wilson, the designers of the game and the director... Director... I, do direct, I was going to say direction and directors there, directors of the game. And uh, does it mention anything about Bob and Barn here? Yes. Paul Arnold, sound effects, and Andrew Barnabas, the original sound... Oh! Oh no, we know that, right? Porn Arnold. <laughs> Paul Arnold provided the sound effects, but Paul Arnold and Andrew Barnabas provide the soundtrack. Okay, yeah, I thought so. But, uh, oh, I love the soundtrack to this game, honestly. You should, you, if any of you have never heard of Medieval and this is your first time like, hearing it, or well, of course you've heard of it on my channel already because I never shop about it, um, I would definitely give their soundtrack a listen because it's an awesome game soundtrack. Some of the soundtrack used this game when I was younger, so if you're pretty young listening to these soundtracks, you might be scared to say no. But yeah, there's the Platinum Disc of Medieval 1. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> platinum Disc of Medieval 1. And there is not really much else I can say, except I am bloody excited to have a Platinum copy of Medieval 1 and a cover that's actually intact. So I might just show you at the end of the video right now all my Medieval games lined up and the map on the bed. Oh, I might actually line up the map on the bed. Oh, God. <laughs> 
I am so like shit the bed about this. I'm like, whoa, shit the bed. I got the medieval poster, and I'm really sorry that it's too dark in here. I honestly could not find a room with any better lighting. I do not have these little lamps that other YouTubers seem to get with recording better quality videos, but I'm a cheapskate. I can't afford anything. So, <laughs> thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, oh, honestly, I was actually going to get Mabel too, so I could get this poster, but I am actually delighted because it's actually on the other side of this one. But at the same time, I'm not delighted because I was hoping to hang it on my wall. But I can't because you know why. But what I will actually do is I'll probably take it to the printer shop so I can photocopy the other side so I can have two posters. So that's an idea. Um, but thanks guys for watching. I'm afraid I can't reuse this. Stop. I'm afraid I can't reuse this Jeffy's bag because I completely wrecked it trying to open the cover. But the main thing is I've got this now. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. And actually, this is not going to be the end of the video. I'll probably put a couple of things at the end here. What did I say during the video? I'd show. I said I'd show. Um, I said a short comparison like with all these stuff. No, never mind, I'll watch the video back through and I'll remind myself because I've got a memory like a sieve, honestly. <laughs> See you guys later. Well guys, this is how my current collection of medieval stands at the moment. So, that's quite cool actually because I just realised that even though I have a second region of medieval 2 that's not actually in English, it's in Italian, Portuguese and Spanish, that is in fact the Platinum Edition. So I technically have both a Retail Edition and a Platinum Edition of medieval 2. So. Correct me if I'm wrong if I'm saying retail is the wrong word there, but <laughs> it's the only word I can think of right now for defining that. But that's me got Medieval 1, and one thing I was actually going to point out to you, I just remembered when watching the video back, I was going to point out to you just how destructed, destructed? Destroyed this cover is, by barely even touching it, it just falls apart. See, <laughs> the cover is not even attached to it anymore, and it's only like the art is with it. It's even, I think it's still got that coffee stain on it from when I first got it, yeah. And it's completely cracked, it's... But it's still got its disc art and it's in very good condition. It doesn't jump or anything, the music, everything, but it runs absolutely fine. So, that's my Japanese version of Medieval 1, which is very rare to find. That's another one I just found on eBay, like, it was literally the only copy left and I couldn't find any anywhere else. I've seen another one that's been put up for sale on eBay now, but it's a very rare one to find. So, if you're wanting to get a Japanese copy of the game, I'd go ahead and grab it. But, uh, you can't really find any ISOs of it anywhere online either, which made it very hard for me to do a long play of it. I might actually replay back through at some point for another purpose. I was going to do a comparison video of all the things different about it, like, but I think I've seen a video of the differences in Japanese and that, but I was going to do one about actually aligning it up to demonstrate the differences between the English and the Japanese version, because I want to do more with this, actually, because I've, ne I've not really seen many people play the Japanese version. I've done a long play of the Japanese version with commentary. If any of you are wanting to watch it, I sort of get all fangirly about differences of spot along the way. I'm like, oh my god, that's different. But, um... Yeah, I love the fan, the fan art. <laughs> I love the cover art on the Japanese version as well. And, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. But, uh, oh, I'm a Japanese long player. I've got to say, in the description of that video, I have actually ripped the ISOs to my computer and I uh, shared them on Sendspace, Sendspace, I think it was. But, yeah, you can download them from there whenever you want to. To play, to play it yourself. If you want to do Let's Plays of it too, just to promote medieval, I suppose. But, yeah, this is actually the Italian version of Medieval 2. I think it's even written in Italian at the back. Yeah, it is up here. Uh, what the fuck is? Siano nel zixat lo alla do do do. But I can't really read that. But I've also noticed that the art looks darker on that medieval two cover than this one. Or is it just me? It just looks darker. It looks more like it's lighter than this one for some reason. I don't know how. But uh, yeah, that's my English copy. Nineteenth century London is held in the grip, gra uh, in the grip of the. It's static Lord Pilthorn? Satanic? Is it? Yeah, Satanic Lord Pilthorn. <laughs> so, and also that's, that's one I've had for years. I had that one since primary school, although that's not my original copy of Medieval 2 because when I was younger I was so careless in my games. I kept destroying them. The music kept jumping. It would like freeze in levels and such because I always got the disc so badly scratched. But this is quite a long lasting Medieval copy I've had. I've had this one for about over 10 years now. So, and this one's still very well intact. It's not destroyed in any way. So I do actually look after my games well now that I'm older, but uh, here's my uh, copy of Medieval Resurrection, the PSP Essentials Edition. I got that for my birthday back in, I think I was in high school by this point. It was like in the first year or something like that. I was probably like 11 or 12. I'm 19 now though, so yeah, that's my copy of that. And also I got this for Christmas. I think it was literally just three or four years ago. It doesn't feel that long though, but it was definitely in my old house that got it, which is the actual soundtrack for Medieval Resurrection. It's, I think actually got really well acclaimed, I think critically acclaimed, is that the actual right term for it? Um, that 
they actually decided to put out as a soundtrack. And I don't know why they never did the same with Medieval 1 and 2, even though Medieval 1 and 2 soundtrack is copyrighted for some reason, but it doesn't really have an official soundtrack. But I can actually respect if this has an official composed soundtrack, that it would be copyrighted. But yeah, here's all the tracks in the back. Uh, so they cut up most of Liam, Scurvy Docs. A lot of the soundtracks are within one track, but they come under a certain title. So like, Welcome to Galamir uh, has Dan's Crypt and Cemetery Hill in it. Oh, and the narrator, that's um, what's the name, Tom Baker. And the spell contains Intro and Enchant Forest. I'm sorry, I've got a shaky hand, but yeah, you, you get the idea of that. You'll, you'll probably be able to find a copy of that online somewhere, so you can order one for yourself. But Oh yes, and we'll just get this from another view as well, of it flipped around. There we go. One camera focus. I have a really bad camera. But yep, yeah, that's all of my medieval merchandise. <laughs> Getting up a fair collection now. I'm, I've never usually really a nerd about anything, but oh my gosh, who'd have thought you could collect so much? It just games a game franchise only ever had three games made. But uh, well, it it was technically in another game. It was in PlayStation All Stars, but sadly can't play that. So I don't have a PS3. But uh, I don't know. I might get a PS Vita just so I can play that one game exactly. But I think you can get a PS Vita. But I'll also start to download my classics on there as well, so I can play them on the train if I'm ever out or something. But Sorry guys, as I was saying before my camera decided to die on me like a bitch, I was just saying that uh, one of the main reasons I really use my PSP is just to provide me with entertainment if I'm like on a train or something. It's a very good small handheld system you can bring with you to just play games on the train and that. But to be honest, whenever I actually play PSP games, I tend to just play them on the PPSSPP emulator because it's just easier that way. You can even project it on your television and that, you can see a much wider screen and it's easier to play with like an Xbox controller and such. But it's also very handy to have a PSP to play on the train and everything. But uh, yeah guys, uh, you've been watching technically what was meant to be just me unboxing this with the map, but then it also just turned into me showing you how my current medieval collection stands at this point. But yeah guys, thank you very much for watching, I have actually enjoyed unboxing this point, I was very nervous before doing it, but I felt like I actually got through it quite well, so. Um, but yeah guys, you know how much I love medieval, mostly, particularly with medieval 2, it's like the nostalgia factor and everything, and medieval 1 just simply because it's a purely awesome game. And Oh, I'll give Medieval Resurrection credit too. It is a very good game, to be honest, but I do feel like it's over-criticised. Uh, even though it is clearly not as good as these two, it's not all that bad, to be honest. And the music and it's absolutely phenomenal. Again, pro compo proposed, composed by Bob and Barn, who did the original soundtracks. But uh, yeah, the game is just pretty much like a child-friendly version and a rushed version of this one, with slightly better graphics, but with worse voice acting in that. I was going to do a video reviewing uh, all three games and determining which one's my favourite, but I recorded my audio and thought, yeah, I'll probably script it next time because I was such a mess when doing it, but thank you very much for watching, guys. This has been my collection of medieval games and just on my map as well. I'm a poster on the other side. I'm thinking of just photocopying the other side so I can have both on my wall. So thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs>